So in my previous video, I said that would be the last fitting and I was not right. So here we are again. I ended up re-watching back the footage while I was editing and decided that I kind of hated how the corset looked. I feel like I went into kind of a fugue state and did a whole bunch of alterations and I think I can explain what I did but I kind of just did it and I'm really hoping it turns out okay. I'm a little concerned. Like I liked how much the hip curve sprung out, however I didn't like the really hard right angle that it caused right at the waist and I think that's part of the reason it was kind of painful, also why it was creasing. So the main thing I've done is lowered the hip gusset, instead made it so that the boning goes a little bit past through the waist. So it should extend about an inch past the waist on like the side front here. I got some feedback from a corset making Facebook group and one of my professors from grad school and the general consensus was that the side was too long and that's why it was like creasing and bunching up was because it just wanted to sit higher. Just on the one side though so I'm a little bit asymmetrical it seems. I'm gonna see if the changes I made can kind of negate that without having to shorten the one side. If not, then I might just go back to the previous pattern and do that, but we'll we'll see. We'll see how this mock-up goes. So because I didn't want to keep using tons and tons of grommets, I ended up just cutting the lacing part off of the previous mock-up and just sewing it straight to this corset. I usually don't use lacing panels just because I haven't had the time to make any, but maybe I'll just keep using this one over and over again. I made this mock-up out of twill instead of cotille because for one I'm running out of cotille and also I will be making the actual corset with a twill base rather than a cotille base. So that's what we got now. I don't know, I'm still, I still don't love it. I tried to add more space to the hips here. I added too much to the bottom for sure. This definitely needs to come in. I don't know. This is less tight than I have made other corsets in the past, so I'm not sure like why it's doing this, where it just seems like it's too tight. I don't know, maybe I should just add a bone <laughs> into the side. It just, it doesn't seem right. Nothing about this seems quite right. It's definitely wrinkling less than it used to be, so that's something, I guess. I just really don't like where all of the volume is coming from. Like, I feel like it's coming from so high up and just so suddenly, but I guess that's just kind of like how my hips are. I can't push down on this, this is just like my hip bones. Because I can't really squish in much more here, there's ribs there. And if I squish here, it does go in more, but I can't press down at all because that's where my hip bones are. So I think that might just be how it has to be because that's how my body is. I do think this is much smoother than I was able to get it on the last iteration. There's still a little bit of creasing. Is that creasing or is that a seam? I can't tell. Nope, that's not a seam. I don't really want to just cut into this, but I think I'm gonna just cut into it. Let's not cut my chibi, so. No, yeah, I guess I mostly just needed space there. Yeah, that eliminated almost all of the wrinkling uh, in this section here, so that's something at least. I think that just because of where my hip bones sit, there is no real way for me to get a smooth transition without the help of some boning to like hold this smooth. I think that's just how my body is. <laughs> we don't know how this looks on a real person anyways. It's just shown on a mannequin. Maybe it was doing this on a real human as well, but I would just like a little bit of boning so that I get less of the like cupcake flare out and more of a like smooth flare out. I don't know, it's just, it doesn't feel like a very graceful shape, whereas that corset looks very graceful. So I'm kind of struggling with how to make that all work out. I I think we're getting to the point where I'm just gonna have to call that it's good enough because I am already running behind schedule and I kind of just need to get going. I'm gonna edit this footage before I move on to cutting the corset, like the real corset. If I see anything drastic that I think needs to be changed or if I come up with any like amazing epiphanies, then I will, I don't know, I'll <laughs> check those, do them, and maybe come up with another mock-up. I'm really tired of doing mock-ups. I feel like I either do no mock-ups or a hundred mock-ups and there's no in-between. Yeah, so I'll let you know how that goes and if, I don't know, you'll just find out. You'll find out. Baby Matt, come here sweet girl. No. Oh, come here. No. Okay. Oh, it got very bright. Too bright. 
did great. Okay, so my last attempt was worse than the previous attempt. Okay, all right, all right, we're okay, we're going. Okay. All right, um, the last attempt was worse than the previous attempt, so I kind of reverted back to the second attempt at a mock-up, uh, and we're just gonna pretend attempt number three didn't exist. So all of the stuff that you saw at the beginning of this video, just erase it from your mind, I guess. <laughs> Hopefully this this will be the last mock-up for real. Let's just do it. Let's just get into it. No. Meow. Baby pet. <laughs> okay, so last fitting was bad, and I had lowered the hip gore, and this time I raised it back up, and then I also raised where the waist indents by about an inch. Basically what I've done is I mentioned that I lifted the waist, and then I also added volume to the front hip, and then I reduced volume at the back hip, which I haven't mentioned, but that's what I did. I also reduced the waist a little bit. I didn't touch the top except to lower the top edge, and then I also raised uh, the bottom hem uh, all around, and then I lowered it here, but uh, I used the same mock-up and just recut it, so I wasn't able to like make anything longer. <laughs> that's kind of where we're at right now, and I think it looks so much better. This looks significantly better than the last time. Sorry, it's like a really bright sunny day so the sun is just kind of all over the place hopefully it's not too hard to see okay so there is a little bit of wrinkling here at the same point here so i think if i raise it just a tiny tiny bit that will fix that wrinkling hopefully i think it's still wrinkling a little bit but it's significantly less than it was before and i think it looks much better i'm really i'm so much happier with this wow this is great hopefully i'll still like it when i go through and edit it which i'll do that before i make any alterations. So I might need to slash and spread this just a tiny bit more, but it's looking so much better. And I think I'll raise just the right side, which is the side I was having an issue with last time, if you guys recall. I'll just raise the right side by maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch. Back is still wrinkling a little bit right there, so maybe I should still try to lift the waist a little bit, but I think that this is probably where my waist should sit. Trying to get my arms out of the way. Maybe I should raise the waist just a little bit more. It does look better when it's up here instead of down here. And my hip is like right here. So raising it definitely helps. Yay! I hope this is not another false alarm where I end up hating it when I do the editing. We'll see. All right, I'm gonna check this footage. I think this is it though. I think we're good and I think I can go on to the actual thing. I'm trying to like get my face in here without just like flashing my cleavage. I think I can move on to the actual corset. I have enough that if I screw it up once, I can make it again. However, the satin that I got is $50 a yard, so I'd prefer not to do that, but you know, it all fails that I can do it again. <laughs> Great, so let's move on to that. Yay! This is attempt number five and I think I finally got it. I was able to use the same mock-up again and just take pieces off of it. So I was able to do a really quick alteration with that and I mostly raised this line here and then raised the waist where it indents again by another half inch and I think I might even do it another half inch again. My first instinct was to do an inch and then when I was altering the pattern it just seemed incorrect. But I think that my first instinct was right and I should have gotten the full inch up because this side is still creasing a little bit, but it's doing so much better. Everything is lying so much smoother now. I've been able to reduce it farther as well, so that's really cool. There's a little bit of wrinkling up in the waist here, which is why I was thinking that I should raise it a little bit higher, just so that is relieved. I think this is finally it. I don't know. I Every time I look back on the footage, I'm like, ah, oh, but I could fix it just this little bit more. This is why I don't do mock-ups. This is why I usually just go straight into the actual fabric because I could sit here and make mock-ups forever and never be 100% happy. But I think, I think this is it. I think this is the time that I have to be like, yes, we're good, we're done. For this, I think I will raise it another inch. It's got a half inch of seam allowance, but I think, I think it does need to go up the full inch. I think we're good. I think we're getting there. <laughs>
So I've shown how I roll pin on a bucket before, but I haven't shown how I deal with seams when I'm flatlining. Normally I don't go this far because when I'm flatlining doesn't need to be super fitted, but because this is a corset, it will need to be like extremely fitted. So that's what we're doing. So basically once I've pinned everything into place in the bucket, I then will go along the seams. If you can see that here, there's a chalk line here. And what I do is I'll fold over and then I'll pin right next to the seam here and I'll be able to then baste it by hand without having to manipulate it while basting it. I'll also pin on this side since basically whenever you sew a seam you're gonna have to press it so that there's a fold here, right? When it's a corset where it's really tightly fitted and all of the seam allowances are very precise, it's good to make sure that there's enough space for your fabric to roll around. This satin on the outside is quite thick so it will take more fabric length or width I guess to wrap around that seam. By doing this you can make sure that it's not gonna pucker or wrinkle because you are allowing for enough fabric to go into all of these seams. So then you can see when I'm done with this, when it lays flat, there's some bubbling in here and that's a good thing because when it is around the body like this, then it'll lay smooth. I have finished flatten lining my pieces. The next thing is to stay stitch the gusset lines. However, I think maybe that I did this out of order. Maybe I should have stay stitched the gusset lines first because what I'll be doing is turning these edges in. So I think I'm gonna have to unpick this just so I can stitch around these two. And then maybe I will re-flatline that. If you are going to do this same process, stay stitch the gussets first. Don't do what I did. While I'm stay stitching the gussets, I'm also going to be flatlining these together by machine. All of my gusset pieces are getting inserted flat. They're not going to have any seam fold over, so they didn't need to be flat stitched by hand because of that, so that's why. I only stay stitched the twill side of the corset and not the silk side because I had already flat lined the whole outside edge so I wasn't sure that these would actually line up and I wanted to make sure like nothing went wrong. Because I have all of my lines marked on the twill side and I can't see the silk side obviously, I decided that that was probably the correct placement so what I did was I stay stitched around the gusset and then I folded it in on this side and then I flipped it over, folded it in on the satin side and then I stuck the gusset inside of it, lined up the seam lines. So first make sure that I had the vertical placement correctly. I just matched up the top edge line of these and then I made sure that stay stitch line that I had done on the twill body matched up to the mark stitch line on the gusset. I didn't match up the two stay stitch lines because this one is slightly outside. I had to match the marked line to the stay stitch line instead of the two stitch lines. Right now I'm basting this together. So I'm basting the two layers of the body together to sandwich the gusset layer and I'm just doing that so that I don't have to have pins under the machine while I'm trying to move it over this because I don't feel like stabbing my hand today. So after I'm done basting, then I'm just going to edge stitch along the outside of the gusset. I've gotten the boning channel panels in now. Those are just big strips of twill. 
the edges folded under and I top stitched that onto it so basically I just pinned it and then basted it and then I edge stitched along the edge again and then what I'll do next is stitch into it so that it makes all the boning channels within it. I think it might have been better if I had done the busk first because I did this line here on the original corset is this stitch line where the flossing stops. This is a part of this big body panel whereas this seam is where the hip gore connects and I think if I had done the busk first then I could have caught those front boning channels in this stitching to make them stop at the bottom. So I think I'm going to end up having to stitch over this again once I do the busk which is kind of annoying but not the end of the world. When I stitch the channels I'll stitch down the middle one first and then I'll stitch the side ones in case there's any bulk that needs to be evenly spread out. If you started from one end and just went across to the other end, you probably end up with some bubbling on the side that you did last. So by doing it in the middle, it kind of helps spread it evenly across all of the channels. To finish the ends of the boning channels cleanly, I've just left really long threads. And what you do is you just pull on it. So I'll just pull on all of these and it'll bring the front thread to the back. You just stick a pin or something through that loop, pull it through tie these two strings off, trim it, and then it's really cleanly finished. There's no back stitching or anything. To do the side seams, instead of doing a normal seam or a lap seam, I'm doing, I think this is called a welt seam, but don't like quote me on that. I don't know. I don't know anything. But I'm sandwiching these so that everything is right sides together. If you say this is like the right side of your lining, it's right side to right side of the lining. So then when you flip it out, you get the same side on both of them. And then right side to right side of your satin. When you flip everything out, this seam will be sandwiched in between the two layers of the back piece. That'll make everything fold out nicely and hopefully that made sense. I think it made sense, right? The waist tape around the busk so it's a little bit more anchored and secure than if it was just going into a seam and that'll just make it a better waist tape. <laughs>
cutting corset bones, I'll just measure all of the lengths and then do a tally for how many I need of each length. But because this corset has so much flossing in it and I'll need to drill through the bones, I need to be very specific with which bone goes in which channel because all of the flossing happens at different heights depending on where it is on the corset. I've sectioned it off into right and left obviously and then I have them in four sections. So the first two bones on the very front of the corset is section zero, so that's just one and two, and section A, B, and C for the very back of the corset. I'm just labeling the bones with which section they correspond to. So this is LA1, so this would be on the left side, and that's left on the body, not facing the body, and that would go into left section A slot one. In order to make sure that I have the tops evenly cut so that they're symmetrical on both sides, I guess that's what symmetrical is. So I matched the bottoms up already and I did that by kind of just matching up the hip cores and the side seams and made sure that was really even and then bound that off. I've inserted the bones. Now that all the bones are inserted and the edges bound off on the bottom, I can match up the bottom sides and make sure that the tops are really even. I cut the right side to the length that I want on the top and I'm just matching it up to the left side so that I can literally just cut along the same line here and then I can bind it off. Next week is my birthday, but we're celebrating this weekend because my parents are coming to visit next weekend. And we got high tea from a local tea shop and it's very cute, yay. There's scones, they're vanilla and orange, and we've got different sandwiches, cucumber, egg salad, and I don't know what this one is. We have some desserts. There's a pavlova cupcake with a little Easter egg jelly bean and a peanut butter melty thing. It's Easter today, so I got the Easter special for my birthday tea. Also, here's the sugar. And our cute pink teacot. Teacot? Teapot. <laughs> it's our cute pink teapot. Our tablecloth is an old towel because we live in basically college housing right now. It's fine. But it's so cute. Yay. Happy birthday to me in a week. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Okay. I also had to put all my corset stuff in this bucket while we do this because this is also where I work every day. <laughs> but all the flossing is almost done. I just have to do some flossing around the bust gussets and the hip gussets and then she's done and I can actually film my reveal and outro. Woohoo!
see how that went. Some thoughts about this corset. I think I might have been a little bit overly ambitious in my last alteration round and made it a little bit on the small side, but I think that's okay. I think what happened, the single layer of twill that I was using previously to make my mock-up stretched a lot more than the combination of the twill and the satin together. With the twill, my alterations to make it smaller would have been just fine and not have given me such a big gap and reduced my waist this much. This was this is a little bit more than I was going for. But because the satin is very like it's a very stable weave, I think combining that with the twill made it so that it didn't have as much give as I was anticipating. So it's a little bit small. But I'm hoping that with some wear and as it like acclimates to my body it'll give a little bit. I did put a waist tape in it so that it doesn't bode well for that. But maybe it will and you know if it doesn't that's okay. Nobody's gonna see the gap except for for me and like you guys on the internet but when I'm actually wearing the costume no one's gonna see the gap it'll be fine I think the shape is really good and I'm really happy with how it all turned out so yay for that there's like a little bit of wrinkling here but again I think that's because I ended up making it a little too small oops uh we know now for the future <laughs> some other notes about this I did all of the flossing with a buttonhole twist which I liked and then I ran out so I switched from my buttonhole twist, which was like the tire buttonhole twist, and I'll link that in the description, but I had to switch to this Guterman embroidery thread that I got from Mood. If you can see some of the flossing on the back, I think the very back molding channels are the embroidery silk. The ones that are like here are the buttonhole twist, if you can tell the difference. I ended up liking how the embroidery silk looked better, so I kind of wish I had started with that. But I didn't, and that's just, I wasn't about to redo the whole thing, so that's where we are. <laughs> there are a few places on the front edge here where I cut the bones a little bit too short, but I still wanted the flossing to go all the way down to the seam. They're a little bit loose and silly looking, so uh, moral of the story, cut your bones the right length. But I didn't, so uh, now I know that for next time. You know, sewing and making projects, it's all a learning experience. You screw some things up and then you do them right the next time or maybe the time after. <laughs> so I think that this turned out very well for what it was. I think it looks like the original corset. Got my handy book here. Yeah, I think that silhouette's pretty good, so I'm happy. So it's a different color, but that was on purpose. That was not like, I'm bad at color matching. I think it went well! Yay! Now I can get started on the corset cover and the hoop skirt and the petticoat and all those other things that I gotta do. But this one, excuse me, um, this one was a big hurdle to get over just because it took so many mock-ups and then, you know, hand embroidery always takes longer than you think it will, so there's that. But I think that's it, so thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, concerns, constructive criticism, just want to say hi and chat, um, please leave a comment and I will respond to you. Talking to you guys in the comments like really makes my day. It's so nice. That was not a part of YouTube that my camera died, but <laughs> comments. I love your guys' comments. It's the part of YouTube that I had not anticipated at all. I just figured I'd be shouting into the void a lot, but it's been so nice to actually get to talk to people. So that's cool, love that. If you wanna see the rest of what goes on top of this thing, then please subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.